remarkable ways that we need more of. We need strength and we need empathy. Have you been I'm a, with them? I've tried and I'll keep trying. Is it a slight contradiction to say this isn't about the president's age, I'm not going to focus on that, while also saying it's about a generational change? I mean, what's, you know the, what you're what's the difference there? Well, I, I will, very clearly. Uh, when I entered Congress, I was one of the class of 2018 that yep. felt it was time for Speaker Nancy Pelosi to, to move on. She and her leadership team, three members of the leadership team, good people had been in their positions for 20 years. And what happens when you're in positions for 20 years? You preclude an entire generation of Americans from, from participating. That's why I believe in term limits. Yes, I'm a Democrat who believes in term limits because it opens places and spaces for the next generation and it encourages and promotes elected officials to be principled the instead of self-preserved. I'm, no, I'm, ta I'm talking about writ large, okay? I, and, and as for generational change, we've had, we have some of the oldest generations serving in our Congress right now. We've had a death this year. We had one on the Supreme Court. The tragedies of some of these things, both human, are deeply affecting to our democracy. There's nothing that the president can do about his age. He's a human being and a good one. Are you worried that but he can't serve out his second term? I'll let American voters decide whether or not. I, like I said, he's a human being, and we understand how human life works, and he's a good man. I'm not running against the president. I'm running for the future. People want it. They're hungry for it. I'm hearing it all over. And all I'm doing, all I'm doing is giving democracy a chance. And if people want to stand in the way of it, if people find that threatening, if people find options and choices and freedoms somehow counter to their principles, then we have different principles. We need more people. And by the way, I'll extend the invitation right now. Join me. All the others who have been thinking about this, it's not too late. Join me. Any names? Join me. Whitmer, you can name the names. I don't. I, this is not about who. It's about the what. The what is participating. They have until five o'clock today. Well, it's only a couple hours from Detroit. Are you running for re-election to the House? Well, I intend to win this election, the nomination, and then win the presidency. So that will obviously have bearing on whether I file in Minnesota again in June. By the way, uh, I've encouraged. I've encouraged primary competitors to enter my race in Minnesota because it's healthy. It's healthy. And I wish more candidates and I wish more people spent time recruiting, recruiting people to serve in public office than trying to diminish their chances. That's why we're in this situation, guys. It's so basic. Are you going to campaign, well, you're you're campaign for president in Minnesota? I'll campaign for president wherever I can, and that means a lot of states, and I can, that's why I got that little bus over there, and we're going to go all over the place. Well, what is the reaction of course I will. from your of course. Democratic colleagues since you announced? Have you gotten support? Are they upset? Are they frustrated? What have you been hearing from them? I think there's an analogy here in how different private conversations are in Congress versus public statements, and uh, I think I'll leave it at that. That's what I'm running against. Why are you starting to keep the pace that's Biden's signature? Are you echoing him? Look, you know, the Republican Party doesn't own the flag or patriotism or freedom. Joe Biden doesn't own keep the faith, right? That's part of the problem right now, too. You know, nobody owns anything like that in America. We share it. And we should all be keeping the faith, and that's why. And, and by the way, like I said, I admire Joe Biden. And by the way, we need to keep the faith right now about this election, because if it doesn't turn out the way it needs to, I don't know about 2028. All the people waiting for 2028, I wish they'd think twice and wish they had thought twice, because it's existential. That's why we should keep the faith about this election. Congressman, have you ever recruited any uh, people to run in your for congressional seat you know, since running for president now? I've had, you know, I've had wonderful conversations with a couple candidates. I've been forthright with them, people I admire. Uh, and I'll leave it at that because I don't want to refer to students specifically who they are. Excuse me. <clears throat> but, yes, because I actually, how funny is that? Am I the first to ever recruit people to run against me? Maybe that's what our country needs a little bit more. So, but you, so you haven't ruled out potentially running, going back running for congressional no. seat in June or anything like no. that? Okay. And that determination will be made both on the quality and capacity of those who might seek that position. I believe in term limits. Uh, I believe change is good. I believe Congress is filled with way too many people who spend all their time protecting their seat instead of protecting all of us. And I think we need change. And I got to walk that talk, and I plan to. I promise you. I promise. I think the maximum service in Congress and in the Supreme Court should be 18 years. Congressman, why did you wait so long to file and announce your presence? Because I spent the better part of a year encouraging others to jump in. I spent the better part of a year trying to inspire the president to pass the torch in a thoughtful manner. Uh, I was clearly unable to uh, succeed in that endeavor. Uh, and three weeks ago, 
I had to make a decision about the future. I lost my dad in Vietnam. He literally gave his life for us, defending freedom. And I would never have been able to sit down and be quiet and get back in line the way that everybody in Washington wanted me to do and have a clear conscience moving forward in light of what is going to happen if we maintain the status quo. And that's why I'm calling for a new declaration of independence against the fear and against the status quo. And you know what? Give someone new a chance who's never, no one's ever offered this to the country in recent years. The thing we need the most we've ever needed, which is decency, integrity, and invitation instead of confrontation. If we keep fighting ourselves, all those battle flags I just saw inside, there are going to be a whole lot more of them. In that state house, there are going to be a lot more dead Americans all around this country and probably around the world. That's how consequential this is, and that's why it's time for change. And what would you do differently with the conflict of the Middle East? How would you handle things to kind of make sure that we stay out of I'm the ranking member of the Middle East Subcommittee on Foreign Affairs. I work very closely with Joe Wilson and my colleagues. I believe very, very deeply that the solution is upon us. The tragedy, the tragedy that we just saw, the loss of life that Hamas caused, terrorist organization caused amongst Israelis, the loss of life we're seeing of innocent Palestinians in Gaza, is tragic, horrifying, and as any human being, I would hope, would feel the same way. The only way we're going to fix that is to engage with the Saudis, encourage a peace deal with the Israelis, and make a core element of that. The core element is a two-state solution with peace, security, and opportunity, both for Israelis and Palestinians. I remind everybody, Israel is a multicultural society, home to Jews, Muslims, and Christians. I envision there will be a Palestinian state that will be home to Jews, Muslims, and Christians. I believe we should be dedicating and redoubling our efforts to that. It's possible. My generation, my generation, our generation, is ready to do it. I see the path. I've been working on it. And I will continue that, and that will be a hallmark of my presence. Is there anything that you would do differently than what Biden's been doing on the Middle East in the last three weeks? I think it is. I think this would be a terribly inappropriate time to comment on the president's handling of uh, overseas events uh, during war. I see too many of my uh, fellow candidates for president demeaning, diminishing him. I think it's despicable, disgusting. Uh, I do have a few differences of opinion on, on policy and strategy, but this is not the time to address that. When is? <laughs> when, when we move beyond the acute elements of, of this, uh, this circumstance, uh, when there is a relative calm that we cannot then miss an opportunity once again to make something happen. Americans, America has withdrawn from a lot of the world. We spend a lot less on diplomacy than we spend on our military. Look mean, at the numbers. You mean after and Israel invades Gaza, you mean? I mean that after the circum Israel has got to eliminate, not just Israel, the free world must eliminate Hamas. Hamas is the enemy of Israel. Hamas is the enemy of Palestinians. That is true. I care deeply about Palestinian lives. I care deeply about Israeli lives. I am so sick of the bloodshed. And by the way, we just lost 18 Americans right here in Maine. 18 Americans slaughtered by the same weapons that our young men and women are carrying around the world in defense of us. And those same weapons are killing us. So let's talk about home first, is what I would say. And let's talk about people who are struggling and can't afford their rent and can't afford their food, don't have health care. And if they did, they can't even access it. We're the only country in the world with the great blessings that we have and also the only country in the world with those great challenges and we've got to do something about it. And I don't have all the answers. I've got some. But I'm going to invite Republicans and Democrats to help generate those answers together in a way that this country needs so desperately and has never seen before. And that's my promise. Okay, i got to run. Thank you. Thank you all.